Hello everyone, I'm Krasi. And in a second, you will hear my uh, prediction for the year 2023 for your ascendant from both sidereal and tropical uh, perspective, depending which astrology you follow. Now, of course, this will be general because if you want to have detailed um, analysis of your horoscope of the year 2023, I need to see uh, your natal chart. Now, uh, for this reason, we created special fee for this type of reading. So if you want to book a reading with me, which will be about the year 2023, uh, you can uh, click under the, uh, on the link under this video and it will be our special fee for 2023. So enjoy uh, the analysis of your uh, horoscope for your ascendant and see you next uh, very soon. Hello everyone who have sidereal ascendant Scorpio or moon in Scorpio or if you're looking from the perspective of the modern tropical astrology this will be Sagittarius or moon in Sagittarius. We will be looking now at the most important celestial configurations and uh, what they would mean for you in next year 2023 so first of all you have one very beautiful event which is the first heliacal rise of venus which will happen now uh, in the first week of december right on your ascendant and this happened only eight years ago and will be valid certainly for the next year for yourself and this will give blessing on your personal everything decisions well-being protection just remember eight years ago what Venus gave you. This is just uh, one thing. Then we know the main, um, the, the planet which brought to the world, the main changes that we're going through now is Saturn. And in 2023, on the 23rd of January, he's changing sign. And from being three years in Capricorn, he will be three years in Aquarius, which happens to be a fourth house. And we are talking here about major changes. So I'm sure that during the last three years, Saturn gave you very important changes related to your communication, maybe travel, maybe education, whatnot. Of course, what exactly he gave you, we can only see in your personal horoscopes. So now on 23rd of January, Saturn is entering Sedira Aquarius, to stay there three years. This happens to be a fourth house. It means that he will be modifying your fourth house with all his powers because he is a co-ruler of Aquarius, meaning that he is capable of giving you relocation, rearrangement of housing, um, everything related to property. He can also give changes in your career place because he will be aspecting your 10th house. Of course, like I told you, how exactly this will play out, we only can see in your personal horoscope. And how, and it will depend on how Saturn is positioned in your horoscope. People with exalted Saturn and beautifully placed, dignified Saturn will get the best of this aspect. Others may have some challenges indeed. However, the main changes will be very much related to your property. Communication with parents, with family. Could be that you bring your business in, in at home. Could be that any anything related to property, real estate, uh, family, mother, you know, communication with parents is possible. And this can influence, of course, your career choices, career development, career place. This axis will be very much influenced. What more will be influenced, we can see based on where your natal Saturn is positioned. Very important uh, thing is that on the 26th of, uh, of um, January, Saturn turns invisible and actually he will be um, visible back in fourth, on 4th of April. And his invisibility means that he will take with him what he means, old regulations, old old. Um, habits or something out related to your house maybe or to where he originally is positioned 
he becomes visible again in eight degree Aquarius in the vicinity of the star form of how to give you new things and lots of spiritual knowledge and experiences because of the nature of the star. Other important event is that on 17th of March, Mars is ruling, is leaving Taurus. So until 17th of March, Mars will be, Mars will be in Taurus. So it means that you, until this period of time, you may need to be a little bit more cautious, careful, loving, intuitive, diplomatic with you, in your romantic life with your partner, but also with partners or when you make agreements or when you take financial decisions, all need to be needs to be taken into consideration. From 17th of um, March until 12th May, Mars will be um, in Gemini. Again, your eighth house, you may need to be a little bit cautious when you make financial decisions, when you, uh, when it comes to finances of partner via partnerships, via unexpected sources. And then on 12th May until 1st of July, Mars will be on your ninth house in Cancer, which means that he may cause you eventually some dose of confusion related to travels. You may need to watch out be very well prepared if you desire to travel during this period of time. When you'll be studying, you need to watch out a little bit. Another thing is that Mars um, becomes invisible on 24th of July to become visible again on 1st of May of 2024 in Pisces. He'll be traveling from Leo to Pisces, meaning he may create some uh, a bit of disharmony when it comes to Korea, uh, when it comes to, um, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful and diplomatic. Also, on uh, fi from 15th of February to 13th of March, Venus will be in um, Pisces and will form beautiful conjunction with Jupiter. And this happens to be your fifth house Actually, this is very beautiful for your knowledge, for your luck, for love, for peace, for gains and money, communication with children. This is very lucky thing. So basically, these are the main things. Also, important is to say that the eclipses of the next year will also take place on the axis of Libra Aries, which happens to be your um, 12th, 6th house is very much related to health, to um, uh, visible enemies, to sharp and chronic diseases. So I don't say that this has been activated for you, but if you have luminaries in these positions, of course you have to be a little bit more, but you know already because last year we have the same um, eclipses happened on the same axis. So you need to be a little bit cautious when it comes to activation of enemies, stay away from disputes, being re responsible for your health. And these periods exactly are the first eclipse out of four uh, in 2023, are 20th of April, solar eclipse total, then 5th, 6th of May, lunar, 14th of October, solar, and 28th, 29th of October, lunar. Meaning during these periods of um, time, these eclipses, you may need to be a little bit more cautious. And when it comes to new beginnings, decisions related to uh, finances, work, wait a little bit until this energy passes then on the 30th of october the lunar nodes are moving all into the axis of libra of virgo pisces and this is changing totally the picture for you and then um, they activate for you 11th fifth houses axis which is a lot about friendships gains communication with children but this will be very different and will already be taking place uh in the 2024 so, ladies and gentlemen, with Ascendant Scorpio, Sidereo, or Moon uh, in Scorpio, this is um, just a general picture about 2023 and what may happen to you. Have great ear, be very strong. And, of course, if you want better detailed look, this only we can see in your 
um, natal horoscope. All the best and see you very soon again.